grades, SAT scores, and applications, all three an important part of the equation when it comes to applying for college. Now, it can be, and I think it is overwhelming for students and parents because I know I'm in the middle of this. Here to break it down for all of us is Dr. Michael J. Yeomans with College Prep Express. It's great to have you back. Hi, thanks. Great to be back. All right, the first thing everybody wants to talk about is that common application. Correct. All right, what is that? The common application is the way, <coughs> excuse me, everybody applies to college now. Back when you and I applied, it was a paper and pencil, or rather paper and typewriter. We all remember feeding those applications into our typewriter rollers. Now you apply to college by clicking submit, which is obviously different. It's all done on a web form. And essentially the Common App has two halves to it. There's a generic half that goes to all colleges. So you fill it out once, and even if you apply to 15 schools, they all get it. And the other half is called the supplement half, where there are uh, college-specific questions that the Common App web form pulls in on the fly based on the colleges you tell it you're applying to. Okay, so it, let's say you have like uh, six colleges you want to apply to, and Correct. so the supplemental application will have whatever those six colleges will require you to complete. Exactly. Uh, the first step always, and it's right at the top of the Common App, is the My Colleges section. So first thing when you're getting ready to do this is you load up the My Colleges. So you, you, you type in the six colleges. Then you go through the generic pieces of uh, the Common App, and then the, at the bottom it says Supplements, and it will pull in college specific questions from those six schools you've told that you're applying so to. So you fill that out and then you submit that as well. Correct. And you still submit it one at a time, but the generic half is the same and goes to all of them. And once you submit it, you can't make changes. All right. How many colleges yeah. should a, a student apply it's for? It's a good question. I get asked that all the time. Around 10 to 12. And I think it's important to have three categories of schools to which you're applying. You want to have your reaches. Those are one or two schools you'd love to go to, but maybe you don't quite have the GPA or numbers, the, the test scores to get in. Then you want to have a half a dozen or so what we call reasonable fits, where there's a decent chance you'll get in based on the numbers and the grades. And then you want to have a couple of safety schools where you're pretty sure based on it, uh, what your numbers are. And most schools today are using Naviance or other tools like them that show uh, the track record of success of students who've applied in the past few years. And based on their GPAs and their standardized test scores, what's their success rate been at those schools? All right, so once you submit all the applications, then do you, you set up an interview or can you do the interview before, all you, before you do all you that? You can do that before, after, or during. Uh, I definitely recommend that students do interviews. Uh, I think it, it communicates to the college I'm interested in your school. A lot of kids say, you're my first choice. I love this school. Well, you know, can you walk the walk as well as talk the talk? Did you show up? There are two kinds of interviews. There's the on-campus interview and the alumni interview. Not all schools today are offering the campus interview. I think it's a, a budgetary thing. It's expensive to have your admissions officers running these, but that would be the first choice because then you're there on site and you get a feel for the college and it's exciting. If, they can't, if you can't get one of those, you try for an alumni interview, but it gives you an opportunity to demonstrate your interest in the school and ask questions of them. It's a two-way street. A lot of students feel like they're on the hot seat and they're going to be grilled, and there is some of that, and you certainly should prepare for it, but at the same time, you get to ask the interviewer's questions, and, and a couple of tips about interviews that I think people that have responded well to. Uh, one is, if you're asked a curveball question that you're just not prepared for, I think it shows a lot of poise and maturity to look them straight and I say, that's a great question. I never thought about that. Can I have a minute to think about it? And they'll respect you for your poise. Uh, another bit of advice that I just learned yesterday from uh, alumni interviewers at Cornell and Dartmouth. Um, is that uh, they want you want to establish a relationship with the interviewer, and so when they say, "Do you have any questions for me?" A lot of kids go, blah, 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 "They don't Gotta really have know." Gotta have questions. Right, and so uh, you can always say, "What did you like best about going here?" What do students who go here talk about as their favorite things about this school? And, uh, and that helps build a relationship, and it's a great question to ask. All right, so you've already worked on your grades, you, allegedly. I mean, you had three years to work on that. Right. And then you've got, then you, of course, you have to take your SATs or ACTs. Right. And you've got your common application. Right. Now, what about the essays? Okay, the essays. There's basically one major essay that goes to all schools. That's known as the personal essay. This year is the first year where they're putting an upper cap on it. It used to be uh, open-ended. Uh, it was a minimum of 250. Now it's 250 to 500. So for a lot of kids, it's shorter, which is actually a harder task to limit yourself. And the keys there are, number one, writing about something about which you are passionate. Um, 
Um, if you're excited about something enthusiastic, it's genuine, that will ring true. If you try to pull the wool over their eyes, they will sniff it out and can't do it, okay? And then I think another a tip I would, would give the listeners is uh, you don't want to make it a laundry list. Every college admissions officer says this. Don't just list us your achievements. Um, and also, don't feel like it, it, when you tell your story, because typically the personal essay is a narrative. It's a story, a moment in time, a slice, a photograph of a moment, and then you reflect back on it and what it says about your character or how you've evolved as a human being or as a student. Don't feel like it has to be this major cataclysmic event. You know, you don't have to be shaking hands with President Obama. You don't have to be, you know, passing a 50-yard touchdown pass to win the state championship to have a compelling essay. It can be about the first gymnastics meet you went to when you were seven and fell in love with gymnastics and you've been doing it ever since. It can be about what you learned from a summer job from a regular customer who engaged you in conversation. It can be mundane as well as, you know, big and important. Very good. We've got to wrap up the interview, but uh, okay. what would you, what would be the, the most important thing to think about as you're putting, you're trying to get through this application well, process? I think um, to try to adjust both the parents and the students with this, uh, I would say for parents, it's really important to give your kids some respect and lay off. Stop nagging them. And now, and I say that as a parent, and we, we obviously want, that, we want, we want them to get it done. So I think get some help. Either go to your college guidance counselor and have them sit on your kids so you don't have to be the get bad guy or engage a company to do it. For students, I would say just get it done. Stop procrastinating. The hardest part is getting started. Great. Thank you, Dr. Humans. We appreciate all that Thank advice. Thank you. Don't appreciate go away. There's here. more Connecticut style right after this. <laughs>